Euclid's first major data release has given astronomers the kind of data set they've been waiting for. A wide, detailed look at galaxies across billions of years of cosmic history. The new observations reveal structures that weren't visible in previous surveys, highlight rare and energetic systems, and expose early clues about how massive black holes form and grow. It's a significant milestone, not because it delivers surprises for the sake of drama, but because it finally provides the scale and precision needed to test long-standing theories of galaxy evolution. In this video, we will explore these discoveries, why they matter, and what comes next. Let's get started. Euclid's Quick Data Release 1 represents only about 0.5% of the mission's full dataset, yet it already includes over 1.2 million large galaxies, captured with a blend of wide coverage and high resolution that bridges the gap between deep, narrow Hubble images and broad, shallow ground-based surveys. This combination is precisely what Euclid was built for, and the early results reflect that strength. One of the most striking findings comes from early type galaxies, ellipticals and lenticulars, where astronomers identified hundreds with a secondary bright nucleus. These aren't decorative features or background objects. They're dense, compact cores that likely originated from smaller galaxies that merged into the host. Their presence provides direct evidence for a phase of galaxy evolution that is rarely seen, the moment when the core of an incoming galaxy has not yet fully settled into the central region. Because supermassive black holes reside in galactic centers, these secondary nuclei are strong candidates for future black hole binaries, making them valuable markers of merger-driven black hole growth. Another significant result comes from the identification of 65 galaxies with highly ionized emission lines and unusually energetic signature. These are typically produced in environments shaped by extreme processes. Accretion around active black holes, shock waves driven by fast stellar winds, or rare, massive stars nearing the end of their life cycles. While such galaxies are known to exist, Finding dozens of them within a small early release sample suggests that Euclid will uncover many more. A larger population will allow astronomers to map how these energetic systems are distributed across time and environment. Euclid is also revealing a much clearer picture of dwarf galaxies, which are the most common type in the universe, but often too faint to study in detail. The telescope's sensitivity shows that dwarf galaxies appear in large numbers even at significant distances, with early morphological breakdowns showing 58% elliptical and 42% irregular. Some contain compact blue cores or globular clusters, giving clues about their internal structure. Because dwarfs are the building blocks of larger galaxies, understanding their variety helps clarify the early stages of galactic assembly. Even with this small first data set, Euclid demonstrates its ability to detect faint structures, trace central features, and capture galaxy populations at a scale needed for both detailed and statistical studies. The discoveries aren't about revealing entirely new categories of objects, they're about providing the depth and consistency required to understand how known processes fit into the larger evolutionary picture. The new findings matter because they address long-standing gaps in our understanding of how galaxies change over time. Much of what astronomers know is based on the morphological classification system, the familiar tuning fork, which organizes galaxies into spirals, ellipticals, lenticulars, and irregulars. That framework describes what galaxies look like, but it doesn't explain how they became that way. Euclid's data allows morphology to be tied to evolution more directly. The discovery of widespread secondary nuclei is especially important for studying supermassive black hole growth. Theoretical models argue that black holes grow through both gas accretion and mergers with other black holes. But observational evidence across large galaxy samples has been limited Euclid changes this. By detecting these compact secondary cores consistently across hundreds of massive galaxies, 
Astronomers now have a strong statistical link between merging galaxies and the formation of dual or binary black hole systems. This provides clues about how giant ellipticals, often containing the universe's most massive black holes, acquired their central structures. The highly ionized galaxies contribute to deeper questions about feedback mechanisms. Feedback describes how energy released by stars or black holes heats or expels gas, potentially stopping new stars from forming. If Euclid's early data is representative, environments shaped by intense feedback may be more common than previously documented. Understanding how these energetic conditions scale with galaxy mass, environment, and cosmic time helps refine models of star formation quenching, one of the key transitions in galaxy evolution. The dwarf galaxy findings are equally meaningful. Conventional models often assume that dwarfs evolve into larger systems mainly through merging. But the high fraction of dwarf ellipticals in Euclid's early sample suggests that elliptical structure may arise earlier or more easily than expected, possibly through environmental effects or early rapid star formation, rather than mergers alone. This challenges parts of the standard evolutionary pathway and broadens the range of scenarios astronomers must consider. All of these results feed directly into broader cosmological studies. Galaxy evolution is closely tied to dark matter, large-scale structure, and the expansion of the universe. Euclid's survey is not just large, it is uniform, with consistent resolution and depth across a vast portion of the sky. That consistency is what makes it valuable for testing theories. Patterns in morphology, star formation, and galaxy clustering can now be traced across cosmic scales with far greater reliability. The early findings demonstrate that Euclid is already enriching models of how galaxies grow, transform, and interact within the evolving cosmic web. What stands out immediately from these early results is the shift from studying individual galaxies to analyzing large populations. Instead of drawing conclusions from a few well-observed systems, astronomers can now study hundreds of thousands at once. This scale is essential for identifying trends, distinguishing rare objects, and understanding how galaxy properties depend on environment and cosmic time. For black hole research, Euclid's detection of secondary nuclei opens the door to building a large catalog of black hole merger precursors. These systems can later be compared with gravitational wave detections, helping to link electromagnetic observations with the merger signals expected from future space-based interferometers. If Euclid continues to detect secondary cores at similar rates, it will provide one of the most complete observational foundations for studying how supermassive black holes grow through mergers. The highly ionized galaxies offer immediate follow-up opportunities. With additional spectroscopy, astronomers can determine whether their extreme emission comes from black hole activity, shocks, or rare classes of massive stars. Mapping these objects across different distances will reveal when such energetic environments were most common and how they influenced surrounding gas and star formation. The dwarf galaxy results will likely become one of Euclid's most influential contributions. Because dwarfs react strongly to gravitational interactions and environmental effects, their shapes, colors, and internal structures can reveal how early galaxies formed and how frequently they were disrupted or absorbed. Euclid's ability to detect them consistently across large volumes will help resolve long-standing questions about how many dwarves contributed to the growth of galaxies like the Milky Way. Looking ahead, the mission's full releases will multiply the available data by orders of magnitude. The six-year survey will map billions of galaxies, allowing for more precise measurements of morphology, clustering, star formation, and central structure. As the dataset grows, astronomers will be able to link galaxy properties to their environments across the cosmic web with unprecedented clarity. Euclid's imaging will also support machine learning approaches, enabling automated classification, anomaly detection, and detailed mapping of galaxy evolution trends. 
As more data becomes available, the mission will provide a foundation for integrating imaging, spectroscopy, and theoretical modeling into a single, large-scale framework for understanding how galaxies change over the lifetime of the universe. Even at this early stage, the mission is already reshaping how astronomers approach galaxy evolution. The discoveries show that Euclid's strengths lie not just in depth or resolution, but in its ability to combine both across enormous areas of sky, a combination that makes it uniquely suited to revealing the broad patterns and subtle features that define the history of galaxies. Euclid's first data release already reshapes how we understand galaxy evolution. The full mission will expand these insights into a far more detailed cosmic map. This is only the beginning, and the discoveries will keep accelerating.